Amen, amen, amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh, oh my soul, bless his holy name. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to give God thanks. We need to give God praise. We need to bless the Lord. David said, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. Greetings, welcome to our teleconference. God bless you. We are here today, tonight, to give thanks to God. This is November the 5th. It's Guy Fox, and I hear a lot of fireworks going all around me. Fireworks everywhere. Please, the name of Jesus. But my fire is in Jesus. Hallelujah. My fireworks is in Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I am on fire for Jesus. I don't need no more fire than what I've got for Jesus. Praise the Lord, because God is good. He is greatly to be praised from the uprising of the sun to the going down of the same. God's name is to be praised. I just want to praise him with all my breath, all the breath that is in me. I want to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So um, tonight I'm going to continue our topic of God's attributes are free or God, God's attributes are not for sale or God's blessings are free. Praise the Lord. And there's a saying that the best things in life are free. That may be hard to believe, but it is true. It is true that the best things in life are free. Praise the Lord. The breath that we breathe, it's free. It's free. God give us the breath that we breathe. Breathe in oxygen. Breathe our carbon dioxide. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. That's free. We couldn't do nothing if we can't breathe. Oh, praise God. So it just brings a point that really... The best things in life are free. Life is free. All we need to do is live it the way God wants us to live. And everything is good. So I'm going to go into the word of God taken from Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. And I'm going to read from verse 4 to verse 25. But before I do, I'm going to have a short prayer as, customary, as I customarily do to ask God to take control because everything is in Jesus. If God is not in it, nothing is going on. Nothing is being done. If God is not in it, forget it. You know, and Moses saw that time that um, he, needed, he needed God. Moses saw that he needed God. And he said, if, you do, if thou go not with us on the journey, take us not hence. Because any journey we take without God is a, can be peril, can be a peril. So God must be in charge. God must be with us. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Bless your name. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you for this time that we're able to come together. Another teleconference service to call upon your name, to bless your name. Lord, your name alone is excellent. We worship you, we praise you, we glorify you, we give you all the honor that is due to your name. You are a holy God, you are a righteous God, you are a loving God, and we thank you for the God who you are. And we thank you also that we are able to come and talk to you, communicate with you, and have a relationship with you. We give you praise. Please, Lord, lead us, direct us. And let your name be glorified. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, our topic tonight is 
God's attributes are free. God's attributes are not for sale. Praise the Lord. And I'm reading from Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. If you have your Bible, turn your Bible, Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. And I'm going to read from verse 4 down. And it began really with Paul, said, talking about Paul when he was consenting unto the death of the saints of God and persecuting the saints and took them whenever he find any child of God, anyone walking after Jesus, he would put them in prison. Imagine that. And he said um, when Stephen was being killed, was stoned, Paul was there holding the garments of those that were stoning him. How awful. But regardless of all that, God had a mark upon him. God had a mark upon him. Um, so this is a translation of the days of the apostles when the Holy Ghost was moving in the church. When the Holy Ghost was moving in the church. When the Spirit of God was moving among the apostles. And when, we, when, we, when they saw signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Because they had received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. And they were sent out. Because Jesus said they would go all the world, go to all the world, preach the gospel. But before you do, before he said to them, go to the upper room and tarry until you're in Jew with Parfum and High. So it tells us that for us, for us to be spreading the gospel, we must do as Jesus said, we must receive the gift of the Holy Ghost which is empowering us to, the, to, 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 to spread the word. So let me read from verse um, Acts chapter 8 from verse 4. Therefore they were scattered that is after Paul was persecuting them. They were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word then Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto the things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracle which he did. For unclean spirit cried with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsy, and they and that were lame were healed, and there was great joy in the city. There was a certain man named Simon, which before times in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was a great one to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is great power of God, and to him they had regard, because for a long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. And when they believe Philip's preaching, those things concerning the kingdom of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracle and the signs which were done. Now that when the apostles which were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, hallelujah, whom when they were come down prayed for them 
that they may receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was not fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on him, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that true laying on, on of the apostles' hand, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whosoever I lay hand, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money? Thou hast no part, neither part nor lot in this matter, for thine heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And Simon then answered Simon and said, Pray he to the Lord for me, that none of these things which thou hast spoken may come upon me. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of Samaria. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, we see the days of the Acts of the Apostles when the Holy Ghost was moving you know, the Holy Ghost is right anyhow. The Holy Ghost is power. The Holy Ghost give, you, give us boldness. The Holy Ghost remove fear because the Holy Ghost is God in us. You know, so the Bible says they were scattered. They were scattered abroad, but God wanted them to be scattered because God wanted to spread the gospel. So because of Saul persecuting the church, they scattered, they scattered. But Philip, he went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them. He preached Christ unto the people in Samaria. Remember, Samaria, Jesus met the woman at the well of Samaria where he said, give me to drink. And the woman was amazed that he, being a Jew, is asking her for a drink. So, uh, sorry, I have to mute some, something in the background. So, he's asking, Jesus was asking the woman of Samaria for a drink. And Jesus, the woman was amazed. Say, how come you being a Samaritan asking me for a drink? Because the Jews have no dealing with Samaritans. But he says, if you know the gifts of God, if, if you know the gifts of God, Jesus said to the woman, if you know the gifts of God and who it is that is speaking to you now, you would ask him for a drink and he would give you living water. He would give you living water. So after talking to the woman, she perceived that he was a prophet. And she went back into Samaria and said to the people of Samaria, all the people she knew, come see a man. So that's how Samaria, Samaria, the Samaritan get to have a taste of the gospel because of that woman at the well. Now Philip say, I'm going down to Samaria to preach to enlighten the people there. And when he preached unto them, the people with one accord, their, their eyes was, they was waiting for more because Jesus had already given a taste of that living water and they wanted more of the living water. 
So when Philip came down and started to give the Spirit of God, the living water, the Word of God to them, they were taken, they were all gave heed with one accord. Hearing, not only hearing what Philip said, but they seen the miracles which he did. Because the Holy Ghost, well, he was anointed with the Holy Ghost. And they saw the miracles what Stephen did. Because those who had unclean spirit, they were crying with a loud voice. And came out of them. Hallelujah. Because the power of the Holy Ghost was there with them. And Jesus was there operating through the Holy Ghost in Philip. And those who had clean, unclean spirit crying with a loud voice came out many were possessed with them and those were taken with palsy those were lame were healed you know when people see these things are taken back you know when people see the work of the holy ghost the power of the holy ghost they have to admit that this is not normal this is has to be god and so the people of samaria said this must be god so they received the word of god they received the words of Philip, the apostle, with great joy. And they say there was great joy in the city of Samaria because of what Philip did. You see what God can use just one man to do? God can use one man to save a nation. God can use one man to save a city. If we're thinking back about, you know, um, Jonah, it was just one man. And he preached a very short, very short sermon. Repent, he says, repent. For Nineveh shall be destroyed. That's all, that's all Jonah said. Repent, for Nineveh shall be destroyed. And the men, with one accord, they repented. They repented. So it says that when they heard, hearing the scene, the miracle which Philip did, unclean spirit, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed. They were taken with the, them, many that were taken with palsy and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in the city. He brings joy to my soul. He brings joy to my soul. There was joy in the city. Can you imagine how people were lame? People were possessed of, of spirits. And Philip came along with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And, it, and all the spirit that were in them just, just left them. Because the Spirit of God was moving. And the Spirit of God is moving today. Now... It comes on to verse 9. There was a certain man named called Simon, which before times in the same city of sorcery, you sorcery, and bewitched the people, giving out that himself was a great one, of whom they all gave heed. And from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the power the great power of god and to him they had regard because he had long time bewitched them with sorcery so this man in the city was bewitched witching the people with sorcery so he was working witchcraft in other words in the city of samaria and people need something to believe in that people, everybody needs something to believe in. So they accepted him because he did sorcery. He did, he worked magic. Whatever he did, he did, he worked magic. And it was, seems that God was with him. So they believed him. But when Philip came along, when the Holy Ghost came along, he, he had to bow. It's like the Bible tells us about Janice and Jambres, how they withstood Moses. So this man was like that because people was looking to him, thought he was uh, he was from God. He had power of God, with God, but he was using sorcery. So people can be easily be led, misled. But when Philip, when they believe Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom, 
and the name of Jesus Christ. They were baptized, both men and women. And Simon himself believed also and was baptized. He continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs that were done. So this Simon, the sorcerer, hallelujah, when he saw the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, came down upon Philip and Philip, and there was moving right, left and center, as we would say, all across Samaria, Samaria. Everywhere Philip went, the Holy Ghost was moving, rebuking, healing, and discharging unclean spirits. Simon was impressed because he'd never seen anything like that. He was amazed. And he himself baptized. He wanted to join. You know, he wanted to join. He wanted to join Philip. He wanted to be like Philip. He, want, he wanted to, he, were, he followed Philip. Beholding the signs and the wonders that were done. And now, when the, when the apostles, which were in Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, hallelujah, they sent unto them Peter and John, hallelujah. Remember, Peter and John was two of the key disciples of Jesus, key men, because, you know, he always said Peter, James, and John. Anytime Jesus had anything, it was about his key disciples, Peter, James, and John. So they were with the Lord, very close to the Lord. You know, sometimes there are some people who are close, and there are some people who are closer. So Peter and John, they were, you know, and they had received the Holy Ghost and Pentecost. So they came down with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So they sent for Peter and John to come down to Samaria because Philip needed some help to spread the gospel. And when they came down, prayed for them that they may receive the Holy Ghost. For they had not fallen upon none of them, only that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So where Philip is concerned, he preached to them about Jesus. And they believed seeing the signs and wonders that were, that was done by the hands of Philip through the Holy Ghost. They believed and they were baptized. So when, when someone comes to God and they believe, the first thing they have to do is to repent and baptize. Obviously, Philip was sure that they repented and he baptized them. But they had not received the Holy Ghost. So everyone has a part to play. And Peter and John came down. Oh, glory be to God. To enforce, reinforce the power of God, of Jesus. And they say, they came and they laid their hands on them. They laid their hands on them. Oh, praise God. You see, when we're, when we're close to God, the power that God give us, the power and the authority that God give us, because first P Philip went down to preach and he healed and he baptized. But God said, send down Peter, send down John. And when he sent them down, they laid hands on those believers and they received the Holy Ghost. Our God is a God of order. And Look in the verse 18. When Simon the sorcerer saw that laying on of hands of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money. You see, something we have to understand about God. God, God, God don't need money. Why does God need money? He says the world is mine and the fullness thereof. 
Everything belongs to God. God don't need money. But because Simon was in himself so much that he thought what he could give God something, the only thing we can give God is a repentant heart and obedience to his word, nothing else. David said, what should I render unto God for his benefits towards me? You know, David was a man who loved God. And it's, what, what can I render to God? What can I give to God? What can we give to God for his benefits towards us? What can we give? He said, I will take the cup of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord now in the presence of all his people. That's all. What does God want? God wants us to take the cup of salvation and call upon his name in the presence of his people. Give him the glory. That's all God wants. God didn't want Simon's money. He thought he could buy the gifts of God. But he did not know that the best things in life are free. The Holy Ghost did not cost the, the, the disciples anything on the day of Pentecost when they receive it. It's a gift. You don't pay for a gift. The Bible says repent. Peter said on the day of Pentecost, repent and be baptized every one of you for the remission of your sin, for the removal of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent. Nothing else. We can't offer God nothing. What can we offer God? But Simon did not realize. He did not know God. He was far from God. He was a sorcerer. Anyone is in sorcery are far from God. Anyone who are indulging in sorcery are far from God. So it says he offered them money, saying, Simon saying to the apostles, Give me this power. Because he's talking to Peter and John. Give me this power that whosoever I lay hands, whosoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Now, <laughs> as we would say that, Simon must have thought that God's business is Dolly Pot. As we say, Dolly Pot, little children play Dolly Pot then play church. Simon must have thought this was, but this is a serious matter. This is a serious matter. It requires our full attention that God has made a way for us to be saved and to be and to be in his kingdom. He said, Give me this power. Offer them money that whosoever lay hand on, they may receive the Holy Ghost. And Peter said unto him, thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. The gift of God cannot be purchased with money. The gift of God is free. The best things in life are free. Salvation is free. Jesus says, come to the waters, come by bread without price, come to the water of life. I am the water of life. I am the light of the world. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest. Do we understand and know the value of rest? Have, have we ever been really, really tired and want to rest? Really, really tired. And how good it is when we feel that we can stretch out and rest. How great is that? And some people can't do that. But Jesus says, come unto me and I will give you rest. 
Peter said, thy money perish with thee, because thou thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thine heart is not right in the sight of God. Peter had to put Simon straight because he was all lean up. Peter had to straighten him up. What do you think you can buy the gift of God? You think God is for sale? You think faith and love and peace is for sale? You think grace is for sale? Your money perish with you. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. Thine heart is not right in the sight of God. But Peter tell him what he must do. Peter says, repent. The key. Repent therefore of thy wickedness. And pray God that perhaps, perhaps, the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Simon was stepping in dangerous territory. Dangerous territory. He thought he could buy God. He, could, he thought he could buy God's attribute. He was, he was in dangerous territory. Peter said, repent, therefore, of thy wickedness and pray God. If perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive. Nobody never tell Peter, but through the Holy Ghost he could perceive. He said, I perceive. You know, we have to have an eye of perception. A child of God must be able to perceive. Nobody told Peter about Simon being a sorcerer, but he said, I perceive that thou art in the gull of bitterness iniquity, sorcery, bitterness. There's nothing good in what Simon was doing before Philip came down to Samaria. There's nothing good. He hasn't done any good works. All the works that Simon did, the people believed him, but all the works that Simon did was wicked, iniquity, bitterness, he said, I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then Simon, realizing that he made a big error, he misunderstood what they were doing, what the men of God, what the apostles were doing in Samaria. He misunderstood what they were doing. He misunderstood what Philip was doing in preaching the gospel, in casting out demons, in healing the sick. He, 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 he did not understand what was going on when the apostles came down. He didn't perceive that they were on the order, on the unction, and they were doing God's work. They were doing what Jesus told them to do. He didn't understand. So, so, so then answered Simon, I said, pray, pray ye the Lord. Not, Simon said to Peter, pray ye. So Simon is now asking Peter to pray for him. That none of these things which thou hast spoken may come up on me. You see, when we're dealing with God, we're dealing with the righteous, holy but the Bible says he's a loving God, but God is a consuming fire. God is fire itself. God is fire. God is fire. God is water. God is light. God is everything. Every good thing comes from God, our Lord Jesus. And then it says... And when and they when they had testified and preached the word of God returned to Jerusalem. 
and preached the gospel in many villages of Samaria. So they went from village to village, dispersing the word of God, which which what Jesus commanded them to do, preaching the gospel. This is why we are here to tell men, women, that they must repent. Repentance is the key. No one can go in the presence of God outside of repentance. Repent. He says, repent. Repent, therefore, that the wickedness of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Wickedness. So, brethren, that is just to say that the, everything that God gives us, he gives freely. Every blessings that God gave us, He gives us freely. We just need to be at the place to receive the blessing. We just have to have a clean heart. We, we just have to have the mind of Christ. The, 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 the apostle says, let this mind, Paul, the same Paul who persecuted the church, says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Do you know, brethren, that we can have the mind of God? We can have the mind of God. That's what they say. That's what it says. Jesus came, God in the form of sinful flesh, yet without sin, to show us how we should live. We have a perfect example of a perfect man. In Jesus and anything temptation come what would Jesus do but then I shortly want to go in the story of Sapphire Anais and Sapphire we know the story well this is when the Holy Ghost was moving in the church in a mighty way and look at this story now I'm gonna read Acts of the Apostle 5 about these two husband and wife oh my god the husband and wife ananias and sapphira wow so it says a certain man named ananias and with sapphira's oh. wife sold a possession and kept back a part of the price his wife also been privy and bought certain part and laid it at the apostles feet but Peter said to Ananias, Why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back a part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? that thou hast lied not unto men but unto God and Ananias hearing these words fell down and gave Hashakoma and gave up the ghost and great fe fear fell upon all them that heard these words the young men rose and warned him up and carried him out and buried him. And it was also in the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether he sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Shakuma. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. And Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of God? Behold, the feet of them that buried thy husband are yet at the door, and they shall carry thee out. 
then fell she down straight away at his feet, yield up the ghost, and the young men came in, found her dead, and carry her forth, and bury her by her husband. And great fear came upon the church, and upon many that hear these things. You know, you know, with some... Sometimes God seems to be a mystery. It's not a mystery, you know. It's just that we don't understand how God works. God, how God operates, you know. These two man and wife sold a piece of land and they together conspire. The two of them plan. Hey, let us give them so much and tell them that's what we sell the land for. They conspired together. It was their land. They didn't have to sell it. It was their land. But they sold it. They sold their possession. And kept back the price. And they want to lie to God. It was a dangerous thing to do. Because the Spirit of God was moving. And God had to set an example for people to see and how the Holy Ghost, how Peter, the Spirit of God, no, no one told Peter, no one told Peter that, um, that Ananias and Sapphira sold, sold the property. No one told him, the Holy Ghost. This is how the Holy Ghost deal with us. The Holy Ghost showed him that they conspire to sell the property and bring half and say this is they could have just said we keep back half that would be fine they could say we sold the property and we kept back half but no they said this is what we sold the property for why just because the devil filled their heart with a lie and they presented the lie to the Apostle and to the Holy Ghost. So God's judgment can be harsh at times. His God's judgment can be harsh. While it remained, while the property remained, was it not thine? It's your property. You can sell for whatever you want, but don't say, don't come before God. Because, you know, the thing is we have to realize when we are a child of God and people talking to us, they're actually speaking. God is actually hearing. Jay Brissett. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, Bishop Brissett. Glad to have you, sir. Praise the Lord. We are approaching, Bishop, God bless you, we are approaching the end of our teleconference, but it's so good to have you. I just want to introduce everybody to Bishop um, Brissett. He's um, in... Yes. A lovely, a, lovely, a great man, and now, now a really lovely man of God. We went down to his church at Plumstead, had a wonderful service a couple of weeks ago. Him, his wife, and the brethren. It was a wonderful thing. I did invite him to join our teleconference, and he's here tonight. God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Bishop, just a briefing on what we were talking about. We were actually, we had had a two part um, series about the gifts of God is not for sale, the attributes of God are free. And um, we had a f part one last week, and we're closing off with part two. So this part was talking about basically um, how um, when Philip um, went down to Samaria to preach the gospel, and basically how um, the people who wanted God gave heed to Philip because the Holy Ghost was moving, and uh, unclean spirit came out of many that were possessed and um, those that were sick and lame they were healed but the whole point of this was when Simon I'm sure you know the story well you're a learned man of God when Simon saw and heard and see 
how the Holy Ghost was operating in Samaria through the hands of Philip. And when Peter and John came down to Samaria and lay hands on those people who believe and they received the Holy Ghost, Simon said, offer them money. <laughs> Simon offered them money. Simon says unto the apostles, he offered them money, give me also this power that I may lay hands and receive the Holy Ghost. So the, the object of it is that Simon thought he could buy God's gifts, but God's gift is not for sale. God's gift is not for sale. The gift of the Holy Ghost is a free gift. And so when they received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, it didn't cost them anything. It's a gift. All God's attributes is a gift. So we are about to close, but Bishop Brissett, it's good to have you. And if you could just give us a thought on what I've outlined. We have other people on the line, which I want to call to comment, but... I've introduced you, the bishop um, from Plumstead, um, the, the River of Life Church, lovely church down there. And if you give us a thought, I'll call upon a few people for a few minutes. Just give us a thought on what I've just briefed. I know is you, you came a little, you know, but you, you get a briefing of what I'm talking about. We have Pastor Winston, Sister McLean, Sister Thank Evan. You. So yes. Thank you so much. So, give us a few words, Bishop. God bless you. My apologies for being uh, late. That's all right, sir. Glad to glad, glad that was all right. God bless you. And I listened to Sister Rose uh, saying that uh, beautiful uh, song uh, earlier. But uh, in particular, uh, referring to the gift of God, which is you rightly pointed out, our free. Yes, sir. And it is always the case that people like to cut home. And uh, uh, the man wanted the gift without going through the Pentecostal Amen. Uh, repentance spirit. Amen. Um, but uh, he found out that the gift of God was not the same. Amen. And one needs to go to the gate of repentance, one needs to be justified, and one needs to receive from uh, God uh, his free gift of salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou will be saved. And that is really the bottom line. God bless you and thank you so much for allowing me to share. Yes, sir. I can God bless you and I hope to be on this time. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Um, it's nice to have you, sir. Nice to have you we have here to your your few words. And um, yes, God is good. God is good. Um, so I'm going to call Pastor Winston to say a few words, and I call Sister McLean to say a few words. Pastor Winston, you're there. Greetings, <laughs> Pastor Winston, Bible Rock Church of God, Leighton Stone. Greetings, greetings, saints, in the mighty name of Jesus. Greetings, sir. Nice to be on this platform this evening. I can say this is the day that Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a child of the King. I'm so glad that Jesus has healed my body. Thank you. Yes, He has healed me. I was very sick and God has healed me. Amen. Thank you. I'm so glad that I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm so glad I'm fire now. I am on fire for God. Despite of the tribulation, trial. Yes. Trial and tribulation. Amen. That has kept me. That has kept me. And as I was talking about the Holy Ghost, I will look at Acts 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully and, come, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. Yes. Two, and suddenly they came a sound from heaven and a rushing mighty wind and filled the house and they were all filled that they were all sitting. Yes. So we need to be on one accord too and God will do the same thing for us. Send the Holy Ghost, send fire. 
try to, to give us strength, try to bring him close, bring him, bring us closer to him. Because we need, at that time right now, we need to be closer to God. Yeah. So we need that fire from above. We need that anointing. Yes. The anointing will yoke. Yes. That's, all we, that's, all, that's all we need. It, to be closer to God. Thank and that he goes closer each day and go along. Because we live in tribulation time now. Amen. Trying and tempting and tribulation and all, everything that's bad going on. Well, I'm not going to man with a darkness, one light. Well, I'm so glad that we are still alive. light. We are walking alive. light. We are sleeping alive. light. We are talking alive. light. The light of the world is Jesus. You please pray for me and and the saints who are in Bible to God in Lindstone. And I'll do the same thing. I mean, Mr. Thompson, keep all the good work. I do the wonderful work. And keep it up, my brother. Keep it up. God bless you, sir. Keep it up. And surely, your reward is in heaven. God bless you. And keep you and make you face for you and give you peace. That's my few words in just name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. This is Pastor Winston from Bible Walk Church in Leighton Stone. A, a wonderful man of God. A really faithful man of God. He's, he's really a man of faith. And um, actually, he is also building a... Uh, a center in Port, Port Antonio, Portland. He's building a center. He's, um, he's a man who's very unselfish, so, um, but he's doing well because he's really trying to help people who are less fortunate than himself. Pastor Winston, God bless you. May the grace of God be with you. Amen. Sister McLean, I have a few words from you. Glad to have you as well. Amen. Yeah, your pastor and Pastor McCann and you have covered everything already. But I'll ju just say, Amen. Praise God. I just want to greet the Holy Spirit, which is the head of my life. I greet you, Brother Tamsir, and the founder of this um, very um, teleconference that is going on strong from 2020. And even if you are alone, you are still there. You are Amen. so faithful. God bless you. Amen. And Pastor Nathan also, I greet you well. And any sir, that minister there that just came on, the Lord bless received. you, sir. We are all one in Christ. Yes. Bless the name of the Lord, because the songwriter of the church is one foundation with Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know, and as you are just sitting here and listening to you, Brother Thompson, I know it was... The scripture was the first scripture we're talking about um, Philip, Philip and, uh, and Simon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then we came back to Ananias and Sapphira. I was looking at, I was uh, looking at it, and when I heard this, the arm um, say Acts chapter five. I just say, what is this? You know, and I said, um, even in this time, we are Christians, and say they are Holy Ghost filled, and they are sitting in sealed telling lies. They do not speak the truth. Because sometimes I wonder why we, I include myself, why we as Christians so lie? Why we just don't speak the truth? You know, because the truth will set us free. And as you were saying about Ananias and Sapphira, the both of them, the, as you said, the land belongs to them. It's, the land was their own. They, they sold it. The money belongs to them. Yes. Um, probably they they look at it and say it was too much yes. to bring to the apostle. But what they should do, say, you know what, we sold a land for a uh, hundred thousand, we're going to give um, eighty thousand. We agree yes. eighty. When you go, you say to the apostle, Peter, yes, I sold a land, but I need something. Yes. So I keep back a part of it. That's me. right. You know, I keep back a part of it. I couldn't, and when I, when I look through and, you know, go through, I say that I really went to need something. I don't have any more land leave for, you know, and so I kept back a part. But the two of them conspired together and yes. said, they are going to say this is what, and they sold the land for 
And but what Peter said, you lie not unto me, but unto the Holy Spirit. And so many times we as Christians we lie to God. But you know because God is merciful. Yeah. Because all in church I hear people stand up testifying lie and I know it's lie. And it's not right. But because of God's mercy, his extend, yeah. extended mercy, you know, <clears throat> that's why many of us are alive today. And I would say the holy, the holy, the, the, the church, or the church get a lukewarm because everything, everybody now come in church and there is no, there is no one to detect them that that person is not right. And sometimes the pastor call on them to go up on the pulpit to oh. preach, to sing, and they are living no life and nobody can see because I see that happen. But the holy, I remember I was at the church and this man came up and was saying that he was secretary for such and such a person in Jamaica and what, and, and he was there and he said something. And the Holy Spirit at the same time, they, they detected him and said, this man is a liar. This man is not right. And he came back to the prayer meeting the Wednesday night. Oh, oh my God. And he was speaking in tongues. And when I came home, I was wondering. And I came home, the Holy Spirit said to me, that man, he is not right. He's not a Christian. And when I went back to church, the pastor called me and asked me, did you give that man money? I said, no, I didn't give him any money. He didn't, I didn't lend him any money. And I said, you know what? When I went to Wednesday night, the Holy Spirit told me that that man is not right. And two tools, it was so, you know, so some of us were so presumptuous. And as I said, God is so merciful. But he's a merciful God and he's a God of wrath. And we have to be careful, you know, because Ananias and Sapphira, they were just... It's not really the money that they, the the land that they sold, but because of his hypocrisy, he yeah. kept back of heart, you know. So we do is an example for us to speak the truth, yes. you know, because God loved the truth. Yes. And as a Christian, as a Christian, I don't know. I'm not exalting myself, and I'm not boasting. Before I should tell a lie or say anything, I don't say nothing at all. Yes. Because I don't hold, I don't know how to make a mistake. I heard somebody come to me and say to me, Sister McLean, in this country, you know, you have to tell lie to go through. You know, me say, me don't know how to tell a lie, brother, to go through. Me don't know. <laughs> me can't tell it. That's right. Because when I tell lie, me don't remember what me say. It's better me talk when me know what's going to happen. But I can't add to it. Yeah. Whether it would be either yes or no. You know, because I don't practice and as a Christian, I try, I'm trying my best. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. You know, I'm trying. And, you know, the scripture, and I was even looking at Joseph when Joseph's brother, they sold him, sold him. You know, they put him in a pit, they didn't want to kill him, you know, because of, of his, um, it's talent that he has and the love that his father rejects over him and things like that was from the pit to the palace. And Josie was the one who, who in the time of famine, could have sufficed them with food. So we have to be careful and, you know, with God's people. So the Lord bless you all this evening, you know, because um, this scripture, it is for our learning and our understanding and to walk faithful and to live as one as I heard Pastor McCann said on the day of Pentecost. They were all in the upper room and one accord. This is a time that we as Christians need to be in one accord. You know? Yeah, because um, because when Jesus comes in, we ask, who is Pentecostal? Who is New Testament? Who is Bible Rock? When I see the blood, I will pass over it. So we all are one. You know, what? from the foundation of the earth, the Lord knows those who belong to you. So the Lord bless us all this evening. And thank you, Brother Thompson, for allowing Amen. me to give a test. I have a testimony, but I pass it over unto the other service. God bless you and thanks. Amen. God bless you, Sister Mark. God bless you. Thank you for your words of...
testimony and you know God is really good to us and you know we have to give him praise we have to give him glory because he's worthy of all the praise and glory that we can give unto him um, we know you know things that the Lord has done for you and we know the mountains and the valleys that you've been through but God is good hold tight my sister God bless you God bless you I see sister Yvonne there joining us she was in Jamaica she, I think she's back in the UK God bless you. And so we welcome you all. I'm going to ask Sister Rose to sing a song for us and then we close. Sister Rose. Thank you, Christian, everyone. I pray that you've had a very good day at church and Pastor Winston, Minister Yvonne, just yeah. clean. And um, Bishop Briss, it's on as well. God bless you, Bishop. So nice yeah. to have you here tonight. And we went to Bishop Briss. I think they had a meeting a couple of weeks ago. We was there and it was a beautiful, powerful meeting. His son was doing the message as well. So God bless you and Bishop. And nice to have you on as well. And uh, the time that we're in now, more, more than ever, and I'm sure you're all in agreement, we need Jesus. We need him more than ever. The time that we're in. Uh, do a very short um, song. Uh, I need the whole I need Bless me now. Oh, I come to thee. I need the hope. I need every hour. God bless you, Sister Rose. And we all need the Lord. We need Him every hour. Can't be without Him. The songwriter said, I can't even walk without you holding my hands. So we need the Lord. But the Lord is good, my brethren. God is good to us all. And so let us continue steadfast holding on to the Lord because He's not He's He's holding on to us. Praise the Lord. So God bless you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I give you thanks for all my brethren who are joining the teleconference. I pray you bless us, keep us to the course of the week. Keep us, our minds be stayed upon thee. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. That is due to your name. Have your way, Lord, we pray. Continue your blessings towards your people, your children. We give you thanks, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So God bless you all. God bless you, PT, Sister Yvonne, uh, Sister Rose. Send my love to your wonderful, beautiful wife, Bishop. And God bless you all. God yes, bless God bless you, Bishop. It's good to have you. Have a wonderful week, sir. God bless you. Thanks. Thank you for joining us.